If you search this channel, you'll find I've got a number of tests on 4.6 liter modular Ford motors, both two valve and four valve. If you're looking for something that has a little more punch, how about a 5.4 liter? Looking to double that? How about a twin turbo 5.4? Let's check it out. In this video, we'll cover the buildup and dyno test of a 5.4 liter four valve navigator motor. The reality is our combination came as a completed long block from Sean Highland Motorsports, and it featured a lot of good stuff, including forged internals, crank, rod, and pistons, and ported navigator heads, stage two and stage three cams on the intake and exhaust. The one thing it didn't have was an intake manifold. Now, the intake manifold, if you ran a factory navigator manifold, would be fairly restrictive, which is why we chose a Sullivan single plane intake. That allowed us to get enough RPM to make some decent power, especially with this combination, because we had big plans. You see, we were gonna add twin turbos from our buddy back at HP Performance. Now, they're no longer in business, but back in the day, they supplied us a pair of 67 millimeter turbos and an air-to-air -air intercooler, and all that stuff worked out great. Now, here's the test. We also ran it naturally aspirated, then we ran it with nitrous, then we finished it up with the turbo. I like the 5.4 liter, especially the Navigator motor, because they're actually easier to find. Now, if I go to Wrecking Yard, I'm not going to find a four-valve Cobra motor. They're very difficult. But I do see a lot of these four-valve 5.4 liters, because they're over in the SUV section. And there's a lot of them over, nah, I don't say a lot, but there are some of them over there, and I can find those. Now, although our combination had forged internals, forged rods, and pistons and stuff, you could probably duplicate this almost all of it, with just getting a motor from the wrecking yard, adding ring gap. If you want to port the heads, you can. Personally, I'd leave them stock because I think that there's more than enough flow with a factory head. If you had some cams you could put in, the guys from Comp have them, Sean Highland, you could put those in and do most of what we have here. Besides, the turbos are going to supply all the power anyway, or the nitrous if you decide to go that route. So let's take a look. We'll run our motor naturally aspirated, then we'll add the nitrous, and finish up with some turbos. You won't be disappointed. To get things started, we installed our four or 5.4 liter four valve navigator motor from Shang Highland up on the dyno, and we ran it with a fast XFI management system. This was long, run up long ago. I wasn't the one tuning this. Um, I was relying on our guys at West Tech Performance to get the tuning done. And we ran this combination with the Sullivan single plane intake and those um, Sean Highland cams in. This thing worked pretty well though, equipped with that uh, single plane intake. The 5.4 liter produced 441 horsepower. As you can see, a nice flat torque curve with a peak of 387 foot pounds of torque, but it stayed you know, right near 380 for quite a while. So this thing worked out pretty well. The first thing that we did after running this thing naturally aspirated, because this was built so that we could run, you know, power adder stuff on it. So what we wanted to do was test things out before adding boost. So we decided, hey, let's just try a quick shot of nitrous. So we put a Zex plate system on this thing, and it worked out really well. Here's what happened after we added. This is basically, we just want to hit it with a quick 100 shot and go, hey, yeah, look, this thing's all sealed up. Everything's working really good. So we hit it with a 100 shot of Zex here. And you can see we engaged this thing fairly early. I think we hit it at about 4,000, and then, then we see a big spike before 4,500. And we got a nice solid 100 horsepower gain through most of the curve. And if we discount the spike there of the torque, we've got 552 horsepower out here at the top. But obviously the tune was pretty nice on this thing. As you can see, the reason, the way that you can tell that a nitrous system is working and that you've got the tune right on it is that the gain stays consistent. Now, a couple of things have to happen for that to work out. One, you have to have a nice steady supply of nitrous in the bottle. So if it's, if it's not full and you're losing pressure and it's cooling off, then you'll start to see nitrous flow taper off and we'll see a, a, a diminishing gain out at the top. Also, if it starts to get rich, it gets unhappy up there too. But this was a nice curve. We had a nice consistent curve. The uh, nitrous was working well. We were making lots of power. So everything worked out. Best of all, when we, after we ran the nitrous, and we saw how well the motor responded to it, we were excited about then putting the turbo system on. So let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the twin turbos on our 5.4 liter four valve. After running our 5.4 liter four valve motor from Sean Highland, both naturally aspirated and with the nitrous, that worked out pretty well, 
It was time to install the turbo setup. Now, our turbo kit came from the guys at HP Performance, and unfortunately, they're not in business anymore, but this was a good setup. It was the same twin turbo setup we ran on our 4.6 liter four valve uh, combination, and we did a bunch of testing with it, and it worked very well. We just applied it all to the bigger 5.4 liter. The one thing we did do was step up in turbo size. Now, the guys from HP supplied a set of 67 millimeter turbos, and I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so that you guys can take a look, but the reality is, since that kit's no longer available, but it's easy to get this kind of power output. There are a lot of good turbos available out in the aftermarket. It's so cheap to buy them anymore. They're really easy to find. The other thing is you'll have to get some dedicated exhaust manifolds. Now the, the HP Performance guys made these dedicated manifolds, but really you could duplicate the same thing with even with the factory manifolds or with any kind of shorty header. All you have to do is get that exhaust to the turbo. Now we routed all of the boost from those twin turbos into a, an air to air intercooler. So it was a two in and single out and all we did was route that up from the intercooler up to our single throttle body and elbow mounted on top of that uh, Sullivan single plane intake because it was a single 4150 flange on top of that manifold. It, it had provisions for injectors so we could run it in EFI like we showed you with the, with the naturally aspirated stuff and the Zex nitrous. All that worked out well. Now that we got our twin turbo set, set up dialed in, let's take a look and see how much power we <laughs> turn this thing up to. I give you a hint, it's four digits. After the success with our nitrous <laughs> injected 5.4 liter four valve navigator motor, we were excited about getting the turbo system on and we got it all ins installed and the guys from HP Performance hooked us up with that stuff and it worked out really good. We got the turbo system installed, started tuning, and obviously whenever you're running a turbo motor, any turbo motor, you want to start off with low boost. You never want to just set it on kill and just go for it because you want to make sure, here's what I do. I like to start off with a very, very soft tune and very, very low boost. We put it on the wastegate and see what happens. We roll into it with very little timing, make sure that the air fuel is right. I didn't tune this one because <laughs> this was done quite a while ago, but that's normally what we do. You want, you want to start off conservative when everything's right, then you could start getting a little bit more aggressive with it. So we started off our first pull. This is our nasty aspirated motor. You know, we were still, still same kind of deal on our NA motor, 441 horsepower, 387 foot pounds. But here's what happened after we added nine pounds of boost. And we get to see something pretty interesting here. This is how dyno sessions go, because we use, sometimes we have to solve problems. And the first thing you're gonna look at is not the peak power output, which is pretty good, is getting up near 700 horsepower, but all this craziness that was happening here at 4, <laughs> 43 or 4400 RPM. And what I think that was, is I actually think that was a stuck wastegate. I think the wastegate was stuck open, and then all of a sudden it, it decided to cooperate, because it went away, as you'll see, in the next power out. But th this was about nine pounds of boost, and we got you know big solid gains and if you take a look at it discounting our little big jump there but if you look at the rest of the torque curve you see that it's like the rest of the torque curve on the na motor because the boost was fairly consistent and that's kind of what they do so if we take a look at that that's working out really good and it's looking promising we didn't rev it as high we only revved it to 6100 rpm here's what happened when we turned the boost up to 13 pounds and as we would expect, you know, <laughs> more boost, more power, and the shape of the curve again stays the same, nice and flat torque curve, rising horsepower curve. In this case, we were over 800 horsepower in the 830 or range or so. It was, um, it was making good power, 835 or 840. So we thought, well, you know what? We're getting close every you know, every jump we're making up in boost is going up in power commensurately. It's a nice combination. So I wonder if we can make it to a thousand horsepower <laughs> before we run out of fuel. As it turned out, we had 65 pound injectors in this thing. And as it turned out, we actually had to stop before we were able to go up and boost and do some retuning because what we did was raise the static fuel pressure another 10 psi and we also had obviously a vacuum reference going to vacuum and boost reference going to the regulator so that the fuel pressure would rise with boost pressure so that we had the same delta pressure for all of this and after raising the fuel pressure up 10 psi to 65 psi static and then rising with the amount of boost that we were supplying, we actually had enough fuel to get to where we needed to go. So here's what happened once we finally increased the boost up to about 18 PSI, it was 
got distracted there for a second. You can see we've got uh, over a thousand horsepower. It turned up to be a thousand and one or thousand and two because we <laughs> officially reached our number. But again, same thing. Look at the shapes of the curves. The torque curves here are all nice and flat and the same. The boost curves are all nice and the same. The tune was the same. The, the boost pressure was nice and consistent. Everything worked out very well on this turbo combination. There was definitely more power to be had in those 67 millimeter turbos. We had more boost if we wanted to. Unfortunately, we didn't have any more fuel. But after getting four digits, we were happy. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about the test of our 5.4 liter four valve twin turbo motor? Actually it was an NA motor, a nitrous motor, and a twin turbo motor. And I think that the takeaway here is that if we add twin turbos to almost anything, it's gonna do really well. I mean, I've run twin turbos on four six uh, two valve motors, four six four valve motors, five fours, small block Chevys, big block Chevys, everything basically. Anything you could possibly imagine. One of the coolest things I did was I, I ran a turbo system on an L98 350 Chevy from a Corvette. And that was interesting because what I was trying to do is create my own Callaway Corvette back in the day. And it worked out pretty well. Uh, it's really, really torquey and not and doesn't make very much power because it does basically what exactly what the, the factory combination does. And it's the same thing for this 5.4 liter. We saw the NA power combination. It worked really well. We saw the nitrous combination. That also worked well. And then when we added boost from the right size turbos on this combination, we just elevated the whole curve and we elevated, in this case, all the way up to a thousand horsepower. Now, unfortunately, we ran out of fueling because I didn't put big enough injectors in here, but that's fine. We were only trying to get to that like big number. We weren't trying to go crazy and make uh, Mahovitz power on this thing, but it worked out well. And it just goes to show you, there's a lot of power left in these, in these two valve and four valve modular Ford motors. All you gotta do, add boost. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Come on, guys, help me out. That's all that stuff. It's right down here. Just push a couple of buttons. I'll keep doing the videos.